names later on. <laughs> I got you. But you can deal with them. Now that's one too. That is one, mm -hmm. Alabama. Just watch me. Just okay. Look, just look at me. Okay. Don't move your chair. Just try to stand. Okay. Just, uh, okay. Perfectly still. Okay. Watch you on the camera or in person? Mm -hmm. Watch you directly no, or in the camera? Just, you know, just talk to me. Okay. Camera head catch you. Okay. Camera got you on the Okay. Okay. Like, I'm gonna look at the camera and turn around and look at Two. you. Two. Okay. 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 Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is stages or phases of African American music. Indeed, it's information dealing with the African American musical experience from uh, Africa through the uh, continents. And of course, uh, we have with us to talk about the various stages or phases of the African American uh, musical experience, uh, Minister Gregory Taylor. And of course, Mr. Taylor, you've been with us on a number of occasions, and we've had an opportunity to uh, hear some information in reference to uh, some of your uh, biblical and Christian experiences, and et cetera, and the importance of music, and et cetera. And so I thought maybe that uh, this would be an excellent opportunity to uh, talk to you about uh, the various stages of the African-American experience. That is, uh, how African-American music developed from the continent of Africa, and indeed how it spread throughout the world. Yes, yes Dr. Haney, it's uh, great to be back. And uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Gregory Taylor from Tuscaloosa, mm -hmm. Alabama. And um, we have been uh, discussing uh, the music over the times that I've been here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a graduate of Selma University. Very good. And since I saw you last, I have mm -hmm. become a member of the Civilian Conservation Corps Legacy Membership. Mm -hmm. And those men's wishes are to be remembered in song uh, down on the Bicentennial Mall. And so all of so many things I saw bringing together the music that is just absolutely incredible. But one of the things that we have completed is what I call a pipeline from West Africa. And in this pipeline, uh, one of the sons of Africa have shared with mm -hmm. me how the music was sang as they were coming into the transatlantic slave trade, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, coming into the transatlantic slave trade, the only thing that lasted, as Dr. Y.T. Walker said, was the rhythm mm -hmm. in the music. And so in a real sense, uh, uh, Mr. Taylor, I think we're saying here that uh, when we look back over the, on the continent of Africa, the Africans who came by way of the Middle Passage brought with them their musical experiences. And, and, and speak to that. I mean, yes. what kind of uh, music are we talking about when we deal with uh, the African musical experience on the continent of Africa? I understand that in Africa, everything every day is done by music. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that there was war music, you know, the few, they used war music in the area of war. And when the music was, as they sang coming into slavery, it was unknown as to where they were coming from, going to, but they have been taught the memories of these songs in Africa. And there is different, uh, uh, you know, tribes that sang different things. 
Uh, they have different drum beats mm -hmm. uh, in Africa than what they have in other parts of America, the African-American music. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is basically those things. But what is most interesting is coming into the transatlantic slave trade and how horrible and difficult that was. Mm -hmm. And but the only thing that lasts again was the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And when Booker T. Washington mm -hmm. came back from Africa to America, he said that the children of Africa mm -hmm. in the southern plantations have a note of sorrow in their music that you don't find in other African American music mm -hmm. in the country in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, go on. And okay. this is the great uh, Booker T. Washington, yes. founder of Tuskegee, Alabama. I mean, Institute in Alabama, the yes. school that you probably know well. Yes. But go on and yes. speak it to speak it. Okay. And he uh, said that the children in the southern states, we have a note of sorrow in our music, mm -hmm. and it's really not understood in a lot of other African American communities in America, mm -hmm. and it's one of the reasons for conflict mm -hmm. in terms of music. Even here today, mm -hmm. in the area of music, mm -hmm. uh, you have disconnects where if they could uh, bring the music together, it mm -hmm. would do so much to help heal the country. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the radio hosts at WHBB, Randy Williams, he said that if the African American community respected the power in their music, mm -hmm. it would do a lot to do away with the violence that is going on today. And in the church that I came up in Alabama, we were taught the old spirituals before we got the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And this way, it would always stay with you mm -hmm. and that type of thing. You learn the uh, scriptures through music, uh, through song, in a real right. sense. Yes, we, uh -huh. we, were, we were, this is where Dr. Harvey, always Harvey would say, the old songs were born in the hearts of our ancestors in the fields. Mm -hmm. And they are our anchor in America mm -hmm. and the means by which our ancestry passes mm -hmm. from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do, uh, Minister Taylor, is to take our first commercial break. Sure. And then we'll come back and we'll give you an opportunity to talk about the African music as it will now appear in the new world. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. About it. Okay. You know, because because I'm gonna be over here, and okay. I hate to be throwing uh, uh, throwing okay. that trash in the yeah. audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I you know, you. I, I got you. Just, just, I was wondering about that. No, I just to ask you if I was speaking loud enough. No, you're not speaking. You weren't okay. speaking loud. Speak it up. Speak okay. out to it. Okay. And I'm gonna uh, let me set the tone. For okay. You, but for when it come back. Uh, you know, we passed you, the, No, uh, this is six minutes, and now we're getting into commercial, okay. and then. When I come back, this is eight minutes. Okay, so now, will this be the Atlantic? Transatlantic? No, we are in uh, America now. Yeah, in America. Maybe, okay, slavery. Kind of, yeah, slavery, okay. Yeah, okay. Slavery, mm -hmm. in okay. Now, I'm going to set the tone in terms of how I want you to speak and the. the I got you. Sound. Okay. You know. I got you. Because it's excellent information, but you seem to be holding it back and whispering uh -huh. to me, and I said, I don't know. But, uh, it's been a long time. Mm hmm. You're doing excellent. You're doing excellent. Because you. you got information. See, yeah, that's yeah. all it takes. Yeah. You got information. Yes. That if you don't have any information, right. then it's, right. a, it's a real problem. That's right. That's <laughs> but you, I know you've got information because mm. we've had you so many times before and you're mm. talking about it now. But mm. I want you to sort of raise that level. Yeah, this see. is the area which I'm most acquainted with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, I've got 30 seconds. Okay. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Minister Gregory Taylor and he's given us some information in reference to uh, the stages of African American music. That is African American mu music from the continent of Africa and in a real sense I think as you've already demonstrated uh, Minister Taylor, uh, African American music will eventually go all around the world. And so let's pick up from uh, where we left off and give you an opportunity to talk about it at uh, where you wish to start. Sure. 
uh, now I can pick up in the area of the Deep South. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the Deep South, as I had said about Booker T. Washington and the late Dr. Owens Harvey who said, the old spirituals, this is very important, the old spirituals were born in the hearts of our ancestors in the fields. And in the Caribbean, they even referenced to the fact that they knew when they got out of slavery that they didn't have health care or anything like that, but their medicine was in the music. And that's the same thing here in America. And in the area which I came up in, we were taught to always stay near the church where the old songs are sang, mm -hmm. because they are our anchor and they're the means by which our ancestry passed mm -hmm. from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. And the church was like our musical hospital. Mm -hmm. The first civil rights movement actually took place in mm -hmm. Mississippi in a music studio. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the one that people think it mm -hmm. actually was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recall when they wrote the, rewrote the songs in the 60s and went into the streets and sang them. Mm -hmm. When they come back, Dr. Haney, they were not the same singers they left as. Mm -hmm. These are key points, mm -hmm. and it's very important in order for us to bring the music back that will help heal the mm -hmm. country. And one of the professors at Emory University has said after studying all the families around the world, mm -hmm. he concluded that the healing of the American family will start with the point of the old spirituals. Mm -hmm. And the maestro here, mm -hmm. I heard him say in a chemistry class at uh, Vanderbilt University that there's a composer who wrote that one day mm -hmm. music will do play a great role in uh, saving the world. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are in that day today. Mm -hmm. And I've kept my music pure. Mm -hmm. I'm probably, I'm probably the purest person in America when it comes to music. And this past Sunday, I actually decided to only go to Sunday school. Because I don't want to see for me to make my music pure, I mean, to mix it up, that's lose money, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and so when you say that you, 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 you kept your music pure, yes. it means that uh, you don't mix uh, no. music that, uh, that you use in Sunday school, church, or, uh, yeah, or right. with church worship. music or worship music. Right. Or, uh -huh. No, 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 I, I don't mix it. And, 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 and the, one of the other things that have taken place here, the old songs which were born in the hearts of our ancestors in the fields, mm -hmm. that was when the European American owned the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, I've connected the old songs to a fourth generation farm, mm -hmm. you know, in reference to the fact of mentioning to you that we discovered that have inherited a farm mm -hmm. in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So what you have here, uh, uh, that's the heart of the America. Uh, the country is the that's farm the land. and the, the music yes, that's you know, the land that was born out of the yes. land. Yes, mm -hmm. and one of the other things we have got to go back and do, we have got to look at the side effects of the music from the 60s. Mm -hmm. And see, like a lot of African Americans have OD'd on the MLK dream and this freedom song, mm -hmm. suffering from mental indigestion mm -hmm. of the 60s. Mm -hmm. You can't sing, well, you can't sing nothing but freedom songs and protest music, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that, uh, these are things we have got to discuss. And you know, Dr. Haney, I believe today we have got to do more discussing music rather than singing music. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I think that's what we're trying to do here now, mm -hmm. uh, Minister. That is to uh, talk about uh, the music that, that, that you know and the music that uh, we've used uh, for all kinds of purposes. I think you've indicated that music was used in the civil rights movement. Yes. It was a, a, a way that we protested. Yes. But we also know that uh, music was also a, an element of entertainment. Yes. Uh, when right. uh, we talk about slavery and uh, musicals, the African musical tradition during that period, uh, how did Africans express themselves in music on plantations? Well, one of the excellent examples of that is about uh, 2005, uh, Oprah Winfrey had a gala, and she had all of those singers to come together, uh, Maria Shriver, uh, one of the ABC News persons, and they were all singing what I call the modern uh, uh, entertainment type hymns and spirituals. And you had the young singers there, and they were just amazed because they had never seen this aspect of our heritage mm -hmm. people. Everybody was amazed, but one of the key things, and I think Sidney Poitier said this, that it was so spontaneous. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't control it. Mm -hmm. And in the spontaneity of the music is what makes it what it is. Mm -hmm. And what I remember was the singer named, I believe, Alicia Keys. Mm -hmm. She actually caught the spirit of the music. Mm -hmm. She said, this is something that we have got to keep 
going. Mm -hmm. And see, I understand that, Dr. Haney, and that means that the music is not taught, mm -hmm. it is caught. Mm -hmm. And by me keeping mine pure, mm -hmm. I'm able to go back and connect the music. And the only thing that I can show you what I mean here is when money, mm -hmm. was, when writing was added to money, mm -hmm. it never separated, mm -hmm. you know. What do you mean when people started to write songs for no, money? No, 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 no. This is way back there. Uh -huh. When money was first, writing was first added to money, uh -huh. it never separated, mm -hmm. you know. And so I keep in my music pure mm -hmm. because I know there's medicine in it. It is needed today to help heal. And Dr. Bradley's music was used in mm -hmm. the 60s to diffuse racial tension, mm -hmm. you know, across the country. Mm -hmm. And then that mentioned about President Reagan's funeral music. Mm -hmm. All of those hymns in President Reagan's funeral music, I grew up on them. Mm -hmm. Every one of them, you know. As, as a matter of fact, when you talk about Dr. Bradley, I think you're speaking of uh, one of the great pioneers yes. in reference to African American music, spiritual yes. music, and etc. Yes. So what we would like for you to do, Minister Taylor, when we come back is for you to uh, devote some time in okay. terms of this great uh, pioneer. Because yes. I think that most of the music that we hear today, spiritual music and et yes, cetera, yes. will come primarily out of some of the things that Dr. Bradley did. And from not, and the most important thing, I think he was at, lived in Nashville, Tennessee. Is That's that right? right, yes, and born so, in Memphis. Okay, so we've got about a minute, okay. and uh, then we want you to start talking about some information in reference to uh, uh, that experience. Yes. And then when we take our uh, second commercial break. But yes. I think that some of the information that you're given now is excellent, and I think it's the kind of information that we want to use, but we want to wrap it around an individual yes. uh, that uh, you believe. I know because we've had conversations in reference to Dr. Bradley before. As a matter yes. of fact, I think you gave me uh, a, 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 a book, a book yes. dealing with Dr. Right. Bradley, and, right. and so I know that you've got a lot of information in reference to it. And so when we come back, then we'll talk about Dr. Bradley, and uh, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. I missed it on, I, I didn't know where I was, but I, I, when you said a minute, I figured that uh, I would try to run that minute out. And so here we come, yes. back with this 10 minute part. And, and so, enthusiasm, okay. whatever, okay. you understand? Yes, 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 I got you, I got you, all and, right. And take command of this thing. We got it. This is your information, okay. so I want you to start talking right. about uh, Dr. Bradley and yes. his information. And we got so we've got 10 minutes. Yes, you know, 10 minutes? Okay. 10 minutes. And okay. And this is the last 10 minutes. Yes, okay. last 10 minutes okay. of the show. Okay. You see. And this, you know, this. Uh, okay. Uh, and, and we'll come back. Let's okay. Say, uh, we, I'll introduce the topic again. Okay. And uh, we use Dr. Bradley as an example okay. of what music really is. Yes. And we can talk about some of his experiences, right. how right. you knew him, or how yes. people knew him, and what yes. they said about him, and That's instead right. of going to England and right. all of that kind yeah. of information. We've got 10 minutes to okay. talk to him about okay. this. Is, and this is going to be the highlight. I'm okay. going to make this the biggest part okay. of, of the uh, discussion itself. Yes. This gentleman. You've given me some excellent information up until now. Thank you. I want you to know that. Yes, sir. God is good. Man. Yes, he you know is. That. Yes, he is. is. Sure he is. Yes, he is. And he has kept us all this time. Mm -hmm. and that means you sitting up. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Minister Gregory Taylor 
and he's given us some information dealing with the stages of the African-American musical experience from the continent of Africa uh, throughout the world. And I think, uh, Minister Taylor, we can pick up uh, during this last 10 minutes okay. and give you an opportunity to talk about one of the individuals yes. that uh, can bring in a large number of other names and et cetera yes. that played such an important part in uh, the musical experience. And this is Dr. Bradley. Yes. Talk about Dr. Okay. Bradley. Uh, I grew up with Dr. Bradley singing in uh, Alabama. Uh, one of my friends who is considered herself to be the number one fan, say he's an unknown superstar, sang all over the world, sang in China, Paris, France, and we're getting his uh, CD back into those different countries. His name is in granite on the Court of Three Stars, just about 100 feet away from the Civilian Conservation Corps uh, marble plaque. And what we are doing here, Dr. Haney, we are bringing together the music of Sir J. Robert Bradley to fulfill the wishes of the CCC camp men. And on that stone down there, it said that few men have the opportunity to uh, touch as many thousands as those men did over the years. Mm -hmm. And also that in, they say at the end, if they see fit to remember us in song, mm -hmm. they will consider that their what. Mm -hmm. And I have to mention this gentleman too, his name is Charlie Fletcher mm -hmm. in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He was a CCC camp man since about 96 years old. That's about the age my father would have been. Mm -hmm. But in reference to Sir J. Robert Bradley, it's all connected. And I have had the opportunity to meet uh, architect Kim Hinton mm -hmm. of the uh, Bicentennial Mall. Mm -hmm. And the, the meeting was so important, uh, uh, Dr. Haney, that I went to visit his church mm -hmm. to see what kind of music mm -hmm. they were listening to. And that idea came from me reading about where when Sir Winston Churchill mm -hmm. met Franklin Eleanor Roosevelt, mm -hmm. he had them to play onward Christian soldiers mm -hmm. because that was during war. Mm -hmm. And see, I am a child of World War II. Mm -hmm. My father was there, you know. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things were coming together and the purpose of it is, is to help protect the country mm -hmm. because I have inherited what it means to be safe mm -hmm. and sound. Mm -hmm. And if I can't be safe, I can't be, mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, but Dr. Bradley, music was used from the East Coast to the West Coast mm -hmm. in order to diffuse tension. And uh, his website, I don't know if I could give that out. Yeah, go give his, that. The website is jrobertbradley.com. Mm -hmm. And his music, the book, we are working on, a, he's due out on a postage stamp mm -hmm. uh, any day now. And we are just hoping that this will help create safe communities, mm -hmm. create an atmosphere, because our people, uh, 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 I don't think it's racism, I don't think it's bullying. I think it's an emotion from the 60s mm -hmm. that have turned into a virus mm -hmm. that this music used to debrief us mm -hmm. from that or help us to shed those mm -hmm. emotions mm -hmm. of that era and these are areas where we got to go and music is the key for doing that mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Bradley uh, sang for the uh, Queen of England mm -hmm. in 1955 it's in his book uh, I've always been uh, we were on your show mm -hmm. Dr. Amos Jones and I mm -hmm. talking about his book and he sang for the Queen of England mm -hmm. and I have received four letters from the Queen of England in regards to Dr. Bradley's music, mm -hmm. you know. And so it is just absolutely incredible for someone to invest in his music back then. And I, not to overthrow the government or anything, mm -hmm. but I listen to God Save the Queen. Mm -hmm. And the reason for it, it keeps my memory mm -hmm. of all the hymns that we sang here in America mm -hmm. fresh. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of the music is stale today, mm -hmm. you know. And this is the way to keep it fresh is to listen to those different songs. And when I visited Kim Hinton's church, I think it's the uh, uh, Hillsborough United Methodist Church, mm -hmm. and I went in there, Dr. Hayne, and they were singing, I want Jesus mm -hmm. to walk with me. Mm -hmm. And I said, they are singing more I am than we are, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's these type of things that's happening with the music now, and we have got to get back to this to save the country. You know, one thing about uh, Dr. Bradley, his beginning. Yes. Uh, talk about that yes, because that, I think that's, that's right. That, that, that that, that's right. a he Booker T. Washington, right. and several many others right. during that period that were able true. to rise to great fame. That's but just right. tell, talk about yes. his beginning. Dr. Bradley grew up very poor. For a long time, he didn't have shoes. And uh, there's a story in his book about where they were hungry and they didn't have any food. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told his mother. 
to forget God or something, and his mother got on him because mm -hmm. she had trained him to sing mm -hmm. in prenatal. Mm -hmm. And my mother marked me by the church mm -hmm. and the prophet Samuel. But also, Dr. Ba uh, Haney, where I can relate to him, my mother was hungry and pregnant with me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can complain like a hungry, pregnant black woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well. But in, in Ariza, it's all, it's all oh. there, mm -hmm. but the music, uh, does so much to help today mm -hmm. uh, the atmosphere and uh, there needs to be more Dr. Bradley's music mm -hmm. on the radio. Mm -hmm. If Southern Baptist and National Baptist would sponsor Dr. Bradley's music on the air, I guarantee you it'll do a lot to diffuse the tension. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote someone in England and let them know that he sang at the University of Alabama mm -hmm. during the time of the problems between the African Americans mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, Caucasians. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just in the third grade mm -hmm. then. But I remember all of those times and things that were going on there. He sang at Stillman College, sang at the University of Alabama. Mm -hmm. And then there's a gentleman here in Nashville by the name of Charlie Parker. Mm -hmm. He heard him at Sanford University. Mm -hmm. And there's a testimony he sent me in order to share with others and how Dr. Bradley talked about that if you love, say you love everybody, you know, and you don't love me, at the, these things like Good. that, the music broke out, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but he has an incredible story and I told him to, when I came to Nashville in 1978, I visited him in his home. Okay. And I told him, I said, I was afraid of you, Dr. Brady, because you would make the people sing in the choir, mm -hmm. and I couldn't. So I didn't go, but mm -hmm. I did go to church to listen to him, and he said, oh, that's all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had an opportunity to meet him face to face yes. and go inside his home. Yes, he was mm -hmm. living in the Capitol Towers, mm -hmm. and this is what he shared with me there. He said, never insult a person in speech. Mm -hmm. And he also said, to me how kind mm. the Queen of England was to him while he was there. Mm -hmm. That's Everything. an extraordinary statement yes. and, and, and really for him to be called yes. uh, to England by the Queen and she having a desire to hear him and of course she and her court, yes. I'm sure. Uh, that, that's an extraordinary accomplishment for a person who came. Now he was from Memphis, was Memphis, he? Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee, dirt mm -hmm. poor. And also Dr, let me not forget Dr, I think it Melvin Townsend at Sun School mm. Publishing Board. Mm. He was responsible for sending him to England mm. to the Trinity School of Music mm -hmm. to be educated. And his mm. purpose mm. was to come back to America mm. in order to teach his people how to sing the old songs. Mm -hmm. And this is what we are trying to continue doing today. And uh, I remember he had several opportunities. The man who was over one of the big radio stations mm. or radio makers on would have taken care of him mm -hmm. if he had stayed in England for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. But he would let them know he had to go back because of what, how he was sent there. Mm -hmm. you know, and by us having kept the music pure, mm -hmm. we were not allowed to leave the church and rewrite the songs to go into the streets to sing them. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, that means my memory of his music is pure. And I grew up on a multicultural street. Mm -hmm. There were uh, 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 Koreans, Choctaw Indians, mm -hmm. African Americans, my sisters are going to Africa, mm -hmm. Stillman, and I met Africans then. So my whole life has been multicultural. Mm -hmm. And here recently, I mentioned to you, I discovered that just at 23, uh, September 23rd, mm -hmm. that my brother was Caucasian, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that has caused me to realize, mm -hmm. you know, that humorously speaking, Dr. Haney, mm -hmm. I can be uh, half Oreo, half apple, and have eight colors, mm -hmm. Crayola colors mm -hmm. in me, because my father roots are from well, well, that's, that, that was a Well, <laughs> that was a common situation in a real sense uh, yes. throughout uh, these periods. And but when you discover it and you know actually what it is, it so helps you, you, you to better a, yourself and well as others. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you a better understanding of everything in yes. a real sense, and, yes. and that life is is is, is really great. And, but it's life is real. That's and right. So I think that, that that's right. It's but true. but I, during this last minute, yes, uh, Minister please. Taylor, let me uh, thank you for bringing by what we consider to be some excellent information dealing with the uh, African American musical experience. And I think one of the most important things that, that I got out of uh, what we are talking about here today is the ability of the certain kind of music to have a great psychological impact upon people, yes. whether it's uh, through singing yes. or through choirs or whatever, yes. and that music is very, very important. Yes. And I want to thank you in a real sense for bringing that information by, and uh, I want to encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you, and good morning.